Well, hi, I'm Noah Bradley, and this is Handmade House TV. On today's episode, we're going to talk about working with green logs, their shrinkage over time, what happens, how can we fix it. Stay tuned. Well, today I wanted to talk briefly about log shrinkage. Uh, when I worked, when I originally built this log cabin, this little tiny log cabin for the Log Cabin Academy, I worked with green logs. Literally, they were trees that were alive the week before I notched them and put them in place. And it's now been a couple of years that the log cabin is set here, uh, aging, ready for me to move it to its permanent location and finish it off as a, as a sweet little log shed for myself. If you notice up here, uh, you can see where the, all of the shrinkage accumulated. Uh, right here that uh, there's a there's a gap now at the top here where the logs have pulled apart Why has it happened right here? And it's all because there's a jam uh, right here uh, That that uh, that supports the the opening the, the door opening into the log cabin uh, And of course this vertical piece is not going to shrink It is forever going to hold this log here in place exactly where it is and so all of the logs that below if there's any shrinkage it will accumulate they will all settle and thus there will be a gap involved here so let's pull this trim board off see if we can see more Now, one of the things that you can see that I always instill is I always count on there being a little bit of log shrinkage. Whether or not I'm working with dry vintage logs or I'm working with green logs, I always allow a little bit of a gap here at the top of the jam uh, and I always put nails uh, in here that are holding it in place. So the first thing I would do in order to shrink that is I would remove the nails from this log here and see if there's enough room for the log to drop to fill this gap in. Well, okay, so now I've removed the trim and the nails from the top of the jam on the other side of this door opening, and yet the cabin still has not come down. It's not uh, filled back in this notch, and that's likely because of one of two reasons. Uh, one is that uh, there's not a whole lot of log cabin above this. This is a tiny log cabin. There's not a tremendous amount of weight as if it was a log home. Uh, but the second reason, and the real reason, is that, uh, is that it needs a bump. It needs something to, uh, right now the pressure is indeed setting on this. There's a, not a whole lot of tendency of it to slide back into place. So it probably needs a few bumps in order to come back into alignment. Yeah, that did the trick. That was a lot better. Now, whenever I bump logs, I always like to use heavy pieces of wood and not sledgehammers or mallets, or it's going to end up uh, abusing and abru bruising your wood and, and permanently marking it, uh, and you don't want to do that. So what's happened here is that I think I started out with originally about a three-quarter inch gap, but now I've got about a, a quarter inch more to go. Now, likely, uh, had the entire cabin been chinked in the process of this, uh, that, uh, that this particular chink gap uh, might have been affected a bit. But I did a lot of, uh, if you saw in the previous episodes, I did, I did uh, uh, some chink gaps on this thing, and I'm really surprised, shocked, in fact. I've never uh, chinked a cabin as green as what this one was, so I was expecting some issues. Uh, but overall, when a cabin shrinks, it can shrink uh, uh, as much as a two or three inches overall height coming down. Uh, but uh, when it comes to each individual chink joint, you're looking at really uh, about a quarter. Your, your logs shrink. Your chink gaps do not. I know that might not make sense, uh, but it, it's, it, it's the way it works out. 
um, and that uh, your chink, you can pretty much chink it. My experience is that you can chink a green cabin and then things will be just fine in the future. Uh, so, but if there was a problem, if there was an issue, chances are this chink gap here created a gap, would have had a gap in it at the top, and that by me doing this, it would have closed that chink gap back in and corrected things. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a good idea to put your cabin up, uh, put your put your jams in place. Leave a little bit of gap in the top. It's yeah. I, I could have gone away without having a gap in the top, but it sure made it a lot easier than trying to cut that little piece of wood out there. The the power of a nail uh, is incredible. You don't really need uh, contact with a jam with a log above, and uh, and it resolved the issue. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting the cabin down and and putting it up on the other place. So anyway, uh, thank you for joining me here on Handmade House TV. We'd like to thank five new members of the Handmade House Guild. They are Audrey Iozelli, Kurt Fromm, Lee Cox, Leslie Francis, one of my most devoted Guild members. Hey, Leslie. And Daniel Titus. Guys, thank you so much for joining the Guild, and we look forward to all the future pro programs coming within it. I'm currently uh, working on the Timber Framing Academy, and there's more information coming on the log cabin one as well. Uh, if you have, if you're not currently a member of the Handmade House Guild, I hope that you'll consider joining us. There's a lot of great information there. Over 40 hours of me giving step-by-step -step instructions on how you can build your log cabin, your stone house, your timber frame, and on and on. So anyway, we look forward to seeing you next week here on Handmade House TV. And in the meantime, uh, come on over and visit us at handmadehouses.com and sign up for our free weekly newsletter. So until then, we'll see you. Thanks again. Bye now.